Hello students, this is Professor Chilai, and in this video we're going to look at properties of liquids. As always, you can follow along with our chapter 10 workbook. By the end of this video, you should be able to distinguish between adhesive and cohesive forces. You should be able to dis define viscosity, surface tension, and capillary action, which are all various properties and phenomena in liquids. And also be able to describe the roles of intermolecular forces in these properties of so viscosity, surface tension, and capillary action. Let's get started. So in our previous, um, previous video, we talked about how uh, intermolecular forces are the forces that hold different molecules together. And there are four of them that we talked about. There's dispersion forces, um, there's dipole-dipole interactions, there are hy there's hydrogen bonding, and there's also ion-dipole interactions. And they each have various different strengths. Now, I mentioned that these intermolecular forces happen between all molecules, regardless of what they are. All molecules would at least have uh, dispersion forces, and some might have other types of intermolecular forces as well between between molecules. Now, in in describing intermolecular forces, we didn't say whether those forces are between two of the same molecules or two different molecules, and so that's where our definitions of cohesive, cohesive and adhesive force uh, forces come into play. So, in cohesive forces, that's the ability of a molecule to stick to itself. So that would be dependent on the intermolecular forces between molecules of the same kind. So this is the ability of molecules to stick to itself or molecule, other molecules like itself. Basically, it's uh, dependent on IMFs or intermolecular forces between the same kind of molecules. Water sticking to itself is cohesive forces. Adhesive forces, on the other hand, as you might now guess, is um, defined as how well molecules stick to other molecules that are not like itself. So it is the ability of molecules to stick faster I write, the worse my handwriting looks, uh, to stick to other molecules, unlike molecules, unlike itself. Or rather, it's dependent on intermolecular forces between different molecules. And so all of the properties of liquids that we're going to look at today is going to be dependent on intermolecular forces, but uh, intermolecular forces either between liquids and themselves or liquids and um, intermolecular forces between those molecules of that liquid and something else. Let's take a look at viscosity. What is viscosity? Viscosity of a liquid is simply its resistance to flow. We know that some liquids uh, flow very smoothly, like water, very flowy. Whereas some liquids, think of uh, syrup or honey, for, um, for example, is very resistant to flow. It, if you sort of drop it, it doesn't really flow out as readily. So viscosity, if we were to write the definition, would simply be the measure of a liquid's resistance to flow. And why does this happen? Well, if you think about it, let's, um, let's imagine this is some surface that we dropped some drop of liquid. Let's say this is water. Um, right, we have each molecule of water. I'm going to draw just a little dot here. And then there's weak, well, there's intermolecular forces in between them. So if this, mo this uh, drop was to sort of spread out and flow, right, uh, it just means that these different intermolecular forces are easily breakable and reformable, if you will. They're, they're weak, and so it lets it flow out uh, a little bit more smoothly. Now, if you imagine a situation where those intermolecular forces were stronger in, let's say, honey or some syrup, right? I'm mean, going to just stronger intermolecular forces, then it would not want to flow or spread out as easily or as quickly, right? And so we're looking at intermolecular forces between the liquid itself um, and between molecules of the liquid itself. And so for the intermolecular forces explanation, 
This depends on cohesive forces. Where stronger cohesive forces, cohesive forces lead to more viscous liquids. Makes sense, right? The stronger the force holding the liquid together, the less likely it would want to flow out. Okay, let's look at another property. Let's look at surface tension. Now, surface tension is the ability of a liquid to sort of form almost what looks like a film on its surface that uh, looks pretty um, not easily breakable, if you will. Think of the surface of water, and sometimes you see sort of insects falling on the uh, walking on the water, like it's almost a solid surface. That's because of surface tension. So, uh, for a proper definition, surface tension is simply uh, defined as the energy required to increase the surface area of a liquid, right? Or it's the force required to sort of increase the uh, surface of a liquid. Basically, let's look at what, what's happening when that, um, in such situations. So let's say you have, not a drop of liquid, but let's say you have a surface of a liquid. And below the surface, there's molecules. Let's say this is water molecule. Water molecules, right? I'm trying to draw a whole bunch of them. If you look at a, a molecule, let's say, not at the surface, it would have lots of different intermolecular reactions with lots of different molecules in all directions if this is a molecule not at the surface. But if you look at a molecule that is at the surface, let's look at this molecule right here, right? It would only have intermolecular forces towards molecules, with molecules that are sort of below it, if you will, if this is the surface. So what that means is for the molecule that's sort of in the center here, it's being pulled in all different directions. However, the molecule that's sitting on the surface is being pulled downwards, sort of away from the surface. So what's happening here is there's cohesive forces, right, between the various um, different water molecules, intermolecular forces between water molecules called cohesive forces here that's sort of more or less uh, pulling this molecule at the surface downwards and sort of keeping it from moving side to side, right? Because um, there's no there's nowhere really to go. Uh, it can't really jump over the other molecule next to it. So because of all of these forces, it, these molecules on the surface are kept relatively in place. And so if you were to have, uh, you know, your insect, if I can draw an insect, there's my insect. On the surface of the water, um, it acts almost like a solid surface to, to, to that tiny insect. And so that's surface tension. So this is also due to cohesive forces. Um, yeah. Okay, let's look at capillary action. So the definition of capillary action is the ability of water to sort of move through po tiny porous areas. So let's write the definition. It's uh, capillary action is when liquid flows within porous materials due to the attraction of the liquid to the material. So this is dependent on both cohesive forces and adhesive forces. So let's look at, at the little um, common example of capillary action. Let's say you have a small glass tube, very, very tiny. I'm drawing it really big here just so that we get an idea of what's going on. But we have a small glass tube, right? And we have, let's say, some water outside, you know, in some container that we put this tube in. Right? We know that water will be in the tube, but let's say um, that the adhesive forces, that's the force between the water molecule and the container, the glass container here, is strong, such that it'll pull the water up 
little bit towards the sides of the container because the force between the water and the container is strong, right? So it pulls the water up a little bit, and now there's also cohesive forces where these water molecules that are pulled up a little bit pulls up a little bit more water as well, right? Cohesive forces between water and other water molecule. Um, so it pulls up water a little bit. The walls of the container pulls up water a little bit more. That water pulls up more water because of cohesive forces, and that repeats, right? Adhesive forces pulls the water up the sides of the container. Cohesive forces pulls the water up along with those water that were pulled up. And you end up having capillary action. Eventually, water will flow up of this tube even though, um, even though gravity is trying to pull it down, water will flow up. This is one um, part of the way that plants, even tall trees, help get water from the roots up, on, up, to, the, um, up to the leaves of the trees. It's not the only way, uh, there are other uh, things there at play, but one of the ways. For capillary action, it's due to adhesive forces between the liquid and the container, and cohesive forces between the liquid and itself. Uh, in these cases, typically the adhesive force, adhesive forces are typically greater than the cohesive forces. But they're both necessary to have capillary action. That brings us to the idea of a meniscus. Now what I was drawing here, right, let's see if I can enlarge it even more. I mentioned that the sides of the container pull some liquid up the sides, right? And that there's my liquid, and then this liquid pulls, so this is through adhesive forces, pulling the liquids up the sides of the container, and then the cohesive forces have those liquid pull up more liquid. But when you, in these situations, what you'll see is this little shape that I, I'm drawing, sort of this downward curve uh, shape in these sorts of containers that you see this effect in. Um, and this is because the adhesive forces are a little bit stronger than the cohesive forces. Let me use a different color. So the adhesive forces are a little bit stronger than the cohesive forces. And so you get a sort of downward shaping meniscus. So a meniscus, let's just write the definition first. Uh, it happens due to cohesive and adhesive forces, of course. And it's the curved shape of a liquid in a container. Now there are two types of um, two types of meniscus. There's a, the one that I just shown you where it could you know sort of curve downwards, right? Uh, but then you could also have situations where the meniscus curves upwards. So why might this happen? Well, this happens when the adhesive forces are not very strong at all, so it doesn't really pull water up. It doesn't want to pull water up the sides of the container because there's no real strong adhesive forces there. And so all you're left with is the cohesive forces between the, the molecules of the liquid. So in the case on the left, we have uh, more adhesive force, adhesive forces than cohesive forces. And this is like water in glass containers. All of our different glass containers in the lab, they usually have a downward facing uh, meniscus. And uh, the one on the right, this is when there is more cohesive forces. than adhesive forces. So this will be, for example, H2O in glass. And the one on the right is, for example, mercury in glass. Forms an upward sort of curved uh, meniscus. So those are the different properties of, um, of liquids that we wanted to talk about. And let's look again at this uh, property of capillary action. So we now we talked about how it's the ability to pull sort of liquid through um, tiny tubes or tiny uh, 
pores, and the height at which uh, these liquids can be pulled up any tube or any container depends on this uh, factor T here, which is a factor that relates to the surface tension of the liquid, and so it will be unique for every liquid. This here depends on the angle uh, of the tube or the capillary tube to the liquid. Typically, theta will be equal to zero degrees, which means cosine theta will be one. R is the radius of the capillary tube. The smaller the radius, right, the higher the liquid will be able to be uh, pulled up the tube. Density, uh, rho here is density, right? The denser the liquid, um, if the liquid is more dense, it would not be pulled up the tube as, um, as greatly as you might expect. And then G here is the acceleration, acceleration due to gravity, right? So if you were, um, if you're on a planet with a higher, uh, strong acceleration due to gravity, then obviously the liquid would not be pulled up as far. And uh, the acceleration due to gravity is for us 9.81 uh, meters per second squared. So let's just use this equation to solve quickly some problems, figuring out how high capillary uh, action can take liquid up, up a tube. Let's look at number seven. So number seven, it gives us a temperature, which is not needed in this equation, so that's sort of a red herring. T here is not temperature, it's the surface tension. And it asks how high will water rise in a glass capillary tube, so they're, they're asking us to find H, how high. The inner diameter is 0.25 millimeter, so the diameter is 0 0.25 millimeter, but we want the radius. The equation asks us for the radius. The radius is just half of the diameter, so 0.25 divided by two, that's 0 0.125 millimeters. Uh, but again, we should probably convert this to meters, just that we, we're using SI units for everything. So that will come out to 0 0.000125 meters. Okay, so that is our diameter. They give us the value for T for water, it's right here. T is equal to 71.99 milli uh, newtons over meters. So this one's a little bit confusing. The upper M here is not meters, it's uh, milli, and the lower M is meters. Uh, let's convert this to more sort of common units that we're accustomed to. We know that one newton is equal to, what is one newton equal to? It's equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. So let's just convert one newton to one kilogram meter per second squared. So meters will cancel out with meters. And then um, we know that 1,000 milli newtons will be just one regular newtons. So that we can cancel out those guys just to convert this to more standard units. And so that comes out to all be 0 0.07199 kilograms over per second square. All right, and it also gives us the density of water. The density here is 1.0 grams per centimeter cube. But again, let's convert this to SI units just to make it more comfortable. We know that 1,000 grams is a kilogram, and we know that to convert centimeters to meters, right, we do that time uh, cubed because the centimeter is cubed, and this comes out to about 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed um, to two sig figs, right? So remember this is to two sig figs. Okay, so now that we have all of the things that we need, we, all, we know that uh, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So let's plug all of this into our calculator. The height is two times T, which is 0 0.07199 kilograms per second squared multiplied by, uh, well, cosine theta is one, because theta is usually one, unless they tell you otherwise. So we can, well, let's just put multiply by one there, times the radius of this capillary tube, which we said was 0 0.000125 meters, multiply by the density of the liquid, which is water, so it's 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed, times 
the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, unit cancellation time. So what do we have? Kilograms, kilograms, second squared, second squared. We have one and two meters here that will cancel out with two of the meters down there, so we're left with meters. But a meter that's a denominator in the denominator becomes the numerator. Um, you can rewind that if that sounded confusing. So our units that we end up with is just meters. And we plugged all of this into the calculator. Remember, we have two sig figs over there. It becomes, um, let's see, 0 0.12 meters. How did we solve this problem? All we did was use the equations for a capillary uh, height of liquid in a capillary tube. We got the diameter, which gives us, gives us the radius. We convert that to meters. We have T. I just converted it to um, kilograms over per second squared. Those are SI units, or base units, rather. We have the density. I converted it to base units as well, and acceleration due to gravity. From then on, in, uh, there on out, it's just plugging numbers and uh, figuring out, well, punching numbers in a calculator. All right, you can pause the video here and try number eight on your own, and then you can unpause and we'll do it together. So number eight says the height that the water rises in a capillary tube is 8.4 cm. So we have the height. The height is 8.4 cm. Let's convert this to meters. To do that, you divide by 100. So it's 0 0.084 meters. OK, so that's the height. Uh, it's asking for the diameter of the capillary tube. So it's asking for d, which is 2 times the radius. Right? If you have a circle. This is the radius, and this is the diameter. There we go. OK, so this is what we're looking for, the radius, uh, the diameter, which is 2 times the radius. They give us the value for t, which we know in more uh, base units is 0 0.07199 kilogram per second squared. They give us density, which we know is also 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, right? And are we missing anything? We have T, we have, uh, we have all the things that we need to solve for R. We always know acceleration due to gravity. So let's write our equation. We know that H is equal to two times T. We're gonna ignite no cosine theta because that's gonna be equal to one, divided by R times rho times uh, G, the acceleration due to gravity. We'll sol we're solving for r, so if you rewrite this equation to solve for r, r will be 2 times t divided by h times rho times g. So let's just fill numbers in. It's 2 times 0 0.07199 kilograms per second squared divided by h, which is 0 0.084 meters, times density, which is 1,000 kilogram per meters cubed times gravity 9.81 meters per second squared. Cancel out, uh, cancellations. Kilograms, kilograms, second squares, second squares, meters and meters with one of the meters. We're left with meters as expected because this is the radius. It's a distance measurement. So the radius then comes out to 1.7 by 10 to the minus four meters. Uh, this means that the diameter, which will be 2 times the radius, will be uh, 1.7 times 2, which is, is 3.4 by 10 to the minus 4 meters. Okay, that will bring us to the end of this section. Uh, in this section, we talked about cohesive and adhesive forces, and they're just different types of intermolecular forces, whether it's between the same molecules or different molecules. And then we talked about how they affected four different properties of liquids, its viscosity, its surface tension, capillary action, and the shape of the meniscus. And then we just use this equation right here to calculate the height of a liquid in a capillary tube to figure out, in one case, the height that the liquid goes up a tube, or in another case, the radius of a tube if we know how high it goes up. In our next video, we'll talk about phase transitions. I'll see you then. Bye.